U.S. tells Israel to up Gaza aid or face arms embargo. The brand embargo, folks. The new red line. It's here. Remember the Rafa red line? All roads in this multi-country conflict lead back to Gaza. Last night in the north of Gaza City, paramedics raced through the remnants to the fresh hell of another Israeli strike. They arrive at the scene. Eight people have been killed. Families are fleeing in the opposite direction. One woman has just lost several nephews, blames Hamas for this. Another woman lost her son, blames Israel. The bodies brought to Al Ahli Hospital for identification. Misery illuminated by mobile phone. Sadly, honestly, comma changing the narrative of the economy. Trump asked, stupid to Israel is a weaker issue for her, but one that has also plummeted in importance. Care for the average person. Issue polling had Israel top three six months ago to 10 or lower now. That's not true. It's literally still the fifth most important, according to the NBC poll that we looked at yesterday. And it will get worse. A lot of the defense for liberalism, unironically, cuts your 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 like future facing analysis short i promise you you do not think about how the public reacts it's not going to be the same degree as like students getting fucking murked by cops on college campuses they shut that shit down pretty quickly however you cannot you cannot reckon with the reality that american mainstream news providers are taking a markedly different tone in their conversations about Gaza and Israel's actions. What do you think that will do to Americans who read that shit? People got burned out, even news did. CNN has a story halfway down the page. Fox and MSNBC doesn't even have a story on the front page. It don't matter. Do you think Biden coming out with a red line is not going to revitalize the conversation surrounding this issue? That's crazy. Also, yes, issue importance doesn't even matter when polling shows Kamala can gain 5% to 6% from an embargo. Even if it's the 10 most important issue, it's clearly still moved the electorate right now. Every single day that Israel rains hellfire on another group of civilians that are in a tent city outside of a hospital, there are tens of thousands of more Americans who are clued in on this reality and dramatically change their analysis, dramatically change their opinion this is like while on the one hand i agree with all these people they said the same thing about uh april being uh about israel protecting civilians and may said biden is the uh rafa is the red line they know for months that israel is deliberately blocking aid the biden admin has knowingly violated u.s and international law all along this is just under pr stunt yes but what a lot of people don't rep what a lot of people are not looking at even on the pro-palestinian side is how people read the rafa red line because biden coming out and foolishly saying, I have a red line in Rafa, caused the media to cover it. And then Americans looked at it and were like, oh, finally, like Biden is actually doing some enforcement. And then no enforcement came. But more people paid attention to it. When the Democratic Party utilizes the bully pulpit in any direction, that isn't simply, oh, we're working tirelessly around a ceasefire. When they move, when they move the needle in a in any direction whatsoever, more Americans are clued in on the actual reality on the ground. That's it. I'm I'm not talking about like uh, whether Biden is honest about this. Of course he's not. Get the fuck out of here. Okay. Of course he's not. What I'm simply stating is that when Biden says this, the media covers it, and when it doesn't happen, and the 30 day is also very important for the record. The 30 day time limitation is very important for two reasons. One, the fuck do you mean you have 30 days to keep starving the Gazan population? You have already recognized that, like, that is a direct violation of international uh, rights and also America's own personal laws surrounding giving arms and weapons to a country that is in direct violation of humanitarian uh, law. And two, the 30 day mechanism implies that the time limitation goes beyond the election. Biden could have said one week, he could have said two weeks, he said 
30 days. That to me is an on is a genuine and fuck you to the Kamala uh, campaign, in my opinion. Yeah, even if people don't care about the humanity or the war, they care about the president being strong. When there's a war going on and he says he's going to stop it, but isn't, he looks weak. And so does Kamala. Trump says he'll end it. They trust him. He's tough. Thank you. Exactly. It's the simplest way to explain it. Americans that do not personally care about the war or the humanity or the death and destruction, and I'm willing to bet that there are far more Americans that do care, that see it, and don't even want to, they don't want to hear about it. You know what I mean? They just want it to end. Some care because like our tax dollars are going to do this. Some care because of the humanity of the situation. Some care because they fancy themselves to be like peaceful doves who don't like war. But ultimately, the broadest number of Americans look at this and go, you're weak. You're getting dog walked by a country that is much smaller that is reliant on our tax dollars to exist. Do you think Kamala will outflank the Biden admin and say they will do a one-day arms embargo? She can't do shit. Biden spokesman at the White House and State Department declined to say the U.S. will restrict arms sales to Israel if it continues to blockade, raising doubts for some about the seriousness of the U.S. warning. Lo and behold, I told you this shit don't matter, okay? It's a fake red line. But the very fact that he is even saying that there's a red line makes the media cover it. It makes Americans, it reminds Americans that there is some kind of enforcement here at play. And yet, and yet, he will not do shit about it, as expected. He addresses the crowd, asks, why did my brother have to die? Am I dreaming? He is not. The Israeli army has ordered people to evacuate the north of Gaza City as it renews its stated aim to root out Hamas. And with new videos released just yesterday, Hamas's military wing wants the world to still see it as a viable fighting force. They are. They literally are. Israel hasn't even been able to f take down Hamas in these areas. All they've done is kill a f ton of civilians they're still getting their tanks marked force operating in these neighborhoods hamas is a shadow of its former self militarily but if part of the point of the october the 7th atrocities was to draw in allies in other countries hamas have succeeded last night benjamin netanyahu spoke to joe biden about his retaliatory attack plan after a barrage of iranian missiles were launched at israel two weeks ago According to U.S. officials, Netanyahu told the U.S. president that the targets of the upcoming attack will be military ones in Iran, not oil or nuclear facilities. A commitment designed to allay fears of an all-out war between... Is, is Hamas diminished? Yeah, of course it is, dude. What the f What do you mean? Like, there, there is... Dude, they've killed so many f people, of course. Even on accident, they are going to end up killing some Hamas militants. <laughs> No accident that today the U.S. confirmed that the troops and components of a sophisticated American anti-ballistic missile system have all now arrived in Israel to bolster defenses against Iran's response. Calibrated retaliation is the buzzword. But back where it all began, in Gaza, this is what calibrated sounds like. From Gaza to Lebanon, where Israel continues to strike across the country as the IDF targets Hezbollah members who've moved beyond their traditional areas. Hezbollah's deputy leader addressed the nation today. They think you set him up to be banned by interviewing him and how it's hypocritical that you didn't get, you didn't get banned for taking part in that conversation? That's insane. No, nothing that Asmongold said in our conversation uh, is, is related to his ban. I suspect that... And I didn't even know he was banned until I was live earlier this morning. But it was everything he said before I had a conversation with him. I was as cordial as I possibly could be in this circumstance. You can try to brigade it as well as you want, as much as you want. And I might even get banned, right? Which might actually uh, cave on this shit as they have done in the past. It's ironic that a conversation that I had about Islamophobia and the false notion that like every Arab and Arab adjacent or every Muslim person is automatically a terrorist being Islamophobia ends up with more Islamophobia. Very, very clear here. I want to be very, very, very clear here because people seem to misunderstand this. People don't get this. Destiny's joke borders pretty hard on Islamophobia. 
I am Islamophobic, and I hate Islam. I am an atheist. Yes. I will make Islamophobic jokes, because I do hate Islam, and I am Islamophobic. Like, the counter to that is more Islamophobia. I apologize for my anger. Wait, that's it? You're completely delusional, and you people will never win. Simple as. Okay. All right. Cool. Asmin Gold, in my opinion, in terms of being a massive content creator, is a larger content creator than me, so much so that his alt account is bigger than my main account. If the conversation is about like how much pull I have personally, no, I did not reach out to Twitch to get him banned or anything like that. Okay, don't be fucking ridiculous. In terms of like his worth to Twitch, he has a higher worth to Twitch than I do in terms of the numbers. Vowing to continue the fighting, our international editor, Lindsay Hilson, is in the capital Beirut, Lindsay. Matt, the Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikasi said today that he'd been talking to the Americans and they had assured him that Israel was going to lessen its attacks here in Lebanon. Well, there's no sign of that. There were multiple. This lady is awesome. Lebanon, Hezbollah. Multiple strikes, particularly in the Bekaa Valley overnight. That's one of. I hate this fucking community. Y'all are intolerable. Joe Biden is like 80 years old. Just let him do a little more genocide, please. He's been a public servant his entire life. Why does it matter to you? You're right. Let Joe Biden get another crumb of genocide, man. Come on. It is fucked up. You're absolutely correct on this. Just let him have it. He's having fun. He's having fun with it. He's enjoying it. One of his fellows' strongholds and in other places too. More than that, we hear that the Israeli soldiers are beginning to demine the area where Syria, Lebanon, and Israel meet. That's to the east. And the suggestion is that they might be considering or preparing to move over the border into Lebanon from the east as well as from the south. So that's of concern too. Hezbollah's deputy leader, there's still no leader to replace the assassinated Nasrallah, said today that their aim was to inflict more pain on Israel and Israelis. There's no sign here in Lebanon that this war is letting up. Last night, Hezbollah were firing rockets into Israel. They know most will be shot down, but every time one gets through, they see it as a victory. At dawn, smoke was rising over the southern Lebanese town of Taibe, and Israeli troops were raising their flag at Labune, a triumphalist gesture to Hezbollah, which today reiterated that they wouldn't stop fighting before a ceasefire in Gaza. We were asked to stop the war and move more than 10 kilometers away from the border so as not to provoke Israel, but we insisted on a ceasefire in Gaza. A thousand kilometers to the east, in the holy city of Kerbala in Iraq, they held a funeral for General Abbas Nilfarushan, a senior member of Iran's Revolutionary Guard, killed by the Israelis alongside the Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah in Beirut last month. The mourners held flags of Iraqi Shiite militia, proxies for Iran, just like Hezbollah. This is a war that's reverberating across the region. Our message to the world is that our belief above all unites us. We're confronting the Zionist enemy who is breaching all international norms. We can see how he's killing children and women from Gaza to Lebanon. A second funeral for the same man was held in Tehran. Attended by Ishmael Khani, head of the Revolutionary Guard Expeditionary Arm, who had himself at one point also been thought dead. These massive gatherings are designed to show Israel and the US that the Islamic Republic and its proxies remain unbowed. Despite Hezbollah's losses and Israel's threats to attack Iran again in the coming days. Such defiance may be less welcome in the largely Christian village of Aitu in northern Lebanon. This morning, rescue workers were still digging out bodies after it was hit by an Israeli strike yesterday. Families had fled here from southern Lebanon seeking safety. <laughs> We've lost everything, he says. Our clothes, our savings, our personal belongings, nothing is left. Across Lebanon and the region, people who have nothing to do with these battles are caught between forces they can't control.
watching all they have built over a lifetime destroyed in a moment. Yeah, bro, who's destroying the villages? Like, who? Who's destroying? Like, there is no cop between a, a, a battle. It's like, no, there's one group that is invading a sovereign nation. The group that is invading the sovereign nation here is Israel. The, the entity that is destroying these villages is Israel. Moment. Fearing how much worse it might get. Now to the Middle East as the region braces for Israel. White House pushes for a restraint in Israel's response to Iran. Dude, there is nothing funnier than the fucking article that came out on this issue where America said that they were going to try a different technique where they would give money to Israel if they didn't strike the nuclear facilities or the oil refineries. All right. Wonderful stuff. The UK just placed sanctions on 70 Israeli settler orgs and outposts. Most notable of those groups is Amana, possibly the largest and most effective settler organization around right now. These guys are responsible for the innovation of the farms, a newer settlement structure that's helped massively accelerate land takeover and dispossession. They're the second Western country to go after them, joining Canada sanctions from June. Until America moves in that direction, I will be, uh, I will assume that that's uh, ultimately inconsequential. One thing that you have to remember is that those sanctions probably do not extend to the state of Israel actually helping them because the real problem isn't necessarily the sanctions or the direct money that they get from Western counterparts. Uh, but the real problem is that the Israeli government is literally offering them subsidies, literally giving them round the clock protection with the IDF, the IOF, sorry. Uh, so, you know, and the big dog in the room is still very much the United States of America.